Hello everyone, welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast from Marvel Snap Zone, and we've got a jam-packed freaking episode for you today. We are looking at three of the best players in Marvel Snap's best decks. We've got Lambie, we've got W, we've got Swen. All three have released new decks that they hit infinite with. These are proven incredible decks from the best of the best bounces back baby get ready for it we're also going to look at the spotlight caches and the cards spoiled for this december at the end of the video so make sure you keep watching if you're interested in that we're going to just take a quick look give a quick initial thoughts and review of those cards as requested in the comments to yesterday's video let's get going but first please hit that sub button please like we bring you at least two today three tomorrow three Decks every single weekday that are proven to get you infinite, to get you infinity borders, to help you climb an infinite in Marvel Snap. We get you the decks before anyone knows them. And hey, this is for people that like to be like, why are you showcasing high win rate decks with smaller sample size? Because by watching this channel, you get in on those smaller sample size, completely unexpected decks before the meta knows how to adjust. The reason they win so much, the reason their cube rate is so high, hey, they're good proven decks, right? But the meta doesn't know what they are yet. So you get extra cube equity. You get extra wins from opponents staying in, from opponents not knowing how to play around stuff. Those early win rates are how you know that you can get value out of the deck. We're looking for Sergio on Twitter. We give away like 15 season passes every month here on the channel. So if you're looking for season passes, check it out. We've given away, I believe, all of our season passes this month, except we're still waiting to find one person on Twitter. It's Sergio, Sergio. Whatever he happens to go by, please check your DMs. We believe in deck credits here. People put a lot of work into decks. And um, you're going to see a lot of the same names over and over as you watch the channel because a lot of the best people decks get featured here because they're decks you should be playing. We've got Lambie, the best player in Marvel Snap, at Twitch TV slash Lambie Series TV. We're going to take a look at his bounce deck. We've got a W deck that um, is extremely cool. W's decks are always unique. W invented Doom Wave. He brought back the Thanos Control, the one that was Spider-Man, Professor X everywhere. And his decks are, he brought back Doom Wave three times, um, including like two weeks ago. His decks are like almost always the smoothest to play in Snap for just like your everyday player. Um, he's an absolute top level player. He's like a phenomenal, phenomenal player. But if you're just going to like pick up and play a deck as a casual player, I suggest W. Um, we've also got a deck from Swen. Swen is in uh, a player who's constantly in like the top 10 players in Snap. He ranked at number one for a lot of last season on the leaderboard and he was number four as he hit infinite this season so we're going to take a look at that deck that is so highly ranked that cut through um that cut completely through ladder like butter and finally we'll look at the data mine cards at the end and thank you to drewberry snap for the infographic drewberry snap does a lot of custom card content a lot of um card reviews and he's phenomenal at it. the nicest guy and has accountability where like he goes back and goes, hey, here's what I messed up with that card. Here's why I think I messed up. Great person, youtube.com slash at Drewberry underscore snap. Check him out as well. Time for Lambie Rogue. Um, apparently, Lambie came to a different conclusion than I did with this deck. Ended up keeping Iron Man, but instead adding Falcon as a way to get that kitty, um, that hood and that bass back. I really, really like the Falcon. Um, the Falcon here is great. I want to be Basting two or three times with this deck. Um, like, if I can get a Bast off on a Hitmonkey, that's great. But, like, if I can Bast Mysterio, Bishop, Angela, like, the or, and sorry, Iron Man, the deck is in really, really great shape for any of those. And, of course, ba uh, Basting Kitty the first couple turns is really good. You want to be able to Bast early, and you'd really like to Bast at least one more time around turn four, if possible. You only lose a power on Beast because obviously you're never really playing America if you're Basting. Um, the other card that Lambie added is the Hood because if you're adding Falcon, the Hood doesn't really have a downside. You're basically always going to be able to get that back to your hand. Um, Elsa doesn't help the Hood too. Making it a 1-0 fundamentally is like not the worst thing in the world. Um, and it can still trigger your Angela, Bishop, etc. It ends up being ultimately a positive card while the Demon as a 1-6 is completely unbelievable. I haven't liked the hood as much completely, honestly, as I tried this deck out. Um, I absolutely love the Falcon edition, and the deck is completely freaking sick and worth playing. 
Um, everything else is literally exactly the same as the bounce deck I made and talked about yesterday, card for card. Um, I have, uh, instead of Hood, Falcon, and Iron Man, different cards. But, yo, um, try mine out from yesterday, but, like, Lambie is better than me, right? Like, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. Um, he's a better player and probably a better deck builder than I am. So, like, check his thing out. You need to try this deck if you have the cards. We can't really replace things here. You need Hitmonkey and Elsa, and, of course, you need Kitty. Kitty is the missing comma there. Uh, we want Mobius in this deck. We can't figure out how to fit Mobius in this deck. Um, there is not a swing spot for Mobius unless it is Iron Man. Um, look. I'm down for cutting Iron Man. Ultimately, what I did is cut Iron Man for Mobius in the first place. If you're getting rolled by wave, then I, then uh, Mobius is your friend. If this becomes the meta version of the deck, wave is going to come back and you're going to have to find space for Mobius. Turn by turn, the bounce is back. Fast is your priority into Kitty and to Hood. Um, turn two, you'd rather play two ones, especially if one is Bast, but Kitty and Hood, probably not. So, um, unless you've already best, right? If you best on one, Kitty and Hood are great on two. If you um, just Kitty and Hood, unless you know for sure you're going to uh, be able to beast that lane because you've seen what they're playing or something, drop Angela or Elsa. Elsa's really hard to counter. I'm starting to see Lady Deathstrike to counter Elsa and Mobius, and I could not think that is cooler for the meta, that like that's giving Lady Deathstrike a home. Um, turn three is a two-drop in Kitty. Again, Angela and Elsa here um, are good. If you've got multiple ones out, a Kitty and a Falcon are totally fine. If not, you just drop Bishop and you're totally fine. Turn four, Kitty and Beast, or a two and Falcon. If you drop a two and Falcon or two ones and Falcon, you're hopefully getting back again Bast. Turn five, Iron Man. If you're going to Bast, you can um, end up sort of trying to go off a little bit that turn. Because, like, unless you have Hitmonkey and Mysterio by then, you know you're drawing America next, so you're not getting it. But turn five is generally reserved for Iron Man. Um, and then turn six is Mysterio plus Hitmonkey, uh, plus either Demon or Kitty. And then you win the game. It's like 30 power in every lane. Bounces back. It's, uh, I don't want to say this is the best deck in the game or bounces the best deck in the game, but it's at worst top five. It's at worst top five. You need to play this deck. All right, let's talk about some variants before we get going. I've got the lovely Noir Hood, I, uh, which I bought. I also bought this really, really cool Kitty. Um, we've got a uh two three hip deck four hip deck i did get this elsa we've got a four hip deck because i did get that elsa today as it popped up in my shop with our new release time i've got the uh hip monkey hip two but this one's better sorry hip. um i brought that hip bishop now which i don't have um this is my favorite angela i've been messing around with different angela's index i've got two americas i really like i think this one's a little better it feels very much like the character two iron mans i really like this and the one where the armor is more like brownish purple cool i've got two falcons this one is cooler the other one is like the red like bobby condom -y one okay um quickly this is this bast is one of the two or three best uh hips in the game i absolutely love it the elsa is great as a hip the beast looks amazing with gold background and nothing but love for mysterio hip so like a plus hip game in this one Shame that hip monkey hip isn't as good as this one. All right. Next up, we got W hit hawk. Um, he when W hit infinite, he immediately hit top thirty. Um, I'm just gonna say this actually. Let's go back one. So occasionally people will be like, "Hey, Lambie can't be one of the best players. He's only ranked like in the top two hundred, not the top like 10. Well, as soon as Lambie hits infinite, he believes conquest is more important than ladder, so he just goes to play conquest. Um. Like, ask any of the top players. He's one of the best. Just, like, come to terms with it. We know who the best players are, right? There's probably some unknown best players in the game. But, like, there's... I would be shocked if there's anyone we think of as a best player. Um, with the sheer sample size we get from streamers, that is not one of the best. All right. W's Hit Hawk. I didn't say what this deck was at the top because it had to be a surprise. This is the coolest goddamn thing I've ever seen. Um, I'm going to propose to w later on because oh my gosh this deck is amazing okay so um the original bounce decks ran dark hawk and korg with bast and this basically takes that basic concept well, like kitty and hit monkey were an out so it just sort of smashes the two ideas together of the early bounce deck and the later bounce deck um dark hawk is completely sick here right like 
you just drop Dark Rock and Four and say you better have Shang, and people aren't running Shang right now. And if they are, like they're Shanking your Dark Rock, and then you're still like, okay, cool, Mysterio hit Monkey with an Elsa at the end of the game, or Iron Man in another lane. And like, what are they supposed to do with that? And then if God forbid they draw a rock, they're just completely screwed. Like completely screwed. Um, your Dark Hawk and Iron Man get extra big because of your Bast. Bast has literally uh zero bad targets in this deck. Everything is at worst neutral, Jeff and Rock Slide. This deck is amazing. Um, this is like the coolest thing. Again, W hits infinite immediately top 30 with a completely original deck that I immediately have like complete anime star eyes. Uh, there's no replacement kitty else hit marker dark hawk like it all that's what this deck is um do you need mobius I, I i don't think so you could maybe have luke um jeff is here right jeff could also be luke and uh looking at that lambie deck i kind of like falcon like being able to rebast is still really good and being able to record is really good so i kind of like falcon here um i'm gonna mess with those spots a little bit and figure out how we go um I'm not scared of wave with this deck, really. Like, if, if I suspect a wave, I can do my hit monkey Mysterio in five and then just drop Iron Man at the end of the game. And I feel like that's probably going to win me most games. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to mess with it some. Um, I also don't think Jeff is necessary. Jeff is great as a 2 6 with Elsa. But again, we'll see. Um, Jeff might even be Nightcrawler, depending on how much Killmonger I'm seeing. I've not been seeing nearly enough Killmonger. All right. Uh, also, Holy shit, Zabu's just gone, right? Like, there's only one four drop, I get it. But, like, Zabu was married to Darkhawk forever. If you saw uh, Korg, Rockside, and Darkhawk, you would see Zabu in the deck 100% of the time for months and months to a point where, like, I kept being like, uh, I kept trying to find Zabu decks that didn't have Darkhawk and royally struggling. Zabu is gone. It's wild. Good luck to your opponent if they draw any rocks. Your turn one is Bass is greater than Kitty is greater than Cork. Sometimes you can Cork. Uh, turn two is either two ones, and in this deck, it's literally any of the two ones. Greater than Angela, greater than Elsa, greater than Mobius, greater than Jeff. Uh, then Rock Slide is your next play. Dark Hog is the next play. Iron Man is your next play. And then you just go off. At that point, you just, um, ideally, you're dropping, uh, excuse me, this way. Uh, at that point, you're hopefully dropping, like, Kitty, Mysterio, and Hitmonkey, and you're just like, well, I win. Um, you really, 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 really want to fit Elsa in somewhere more than you want to fit Angela in, but if you've got Kitty going, Angela's more important. If not, Elsa's more important. Um, but if you can fill lanes, everything in this deck just goes through the roof. Um, a 218 Mysterio is going to get changed. I'm calling it now. Mysterio cannot get to 218 with best, and... Uh, Best and Elsa. Like, it's either going to get changed or it's going to get Elsa changed. Quick variant talk again. Uh, no point talking about the same variants as last time, but we've got an extra hip in Hip Korg here. We've got our Hip Mobius, which is the other best hip along with Best. I don't know which one I like more. They're real close. Uh, we got our Hip Jeff too. So, like, a heavy hip deck. This is a good This is a good deck. We've got the amazing Rock, Paper, Scissors, Rock Slide. This is my favorite Dark Hawk. I think it looks really cool. I don't usually like realistic art, but this one has like, I don't know. I don't want to say a Vader vibe, but like not, not a Vader vibe. And this is that second Iron Man I told you uh, I had. So I decided to just switch up the Iron Man because like, look at how cool that Iron Man is. This deck is gorgeous. These cards are super powerful. Um, If you can make this deck, again, like the Lambie deck, try the deck. You're going to win games of Marvel's deck. I'm just saying, you're just going to. Um, assuming you have like decent fundamentals. That's what the play-by-play -play turn guide is. Um, remember, you don't have to follow this exactly, right? You're not going to draw in exactly this order. This is sort of what you're looking for. You're trying to approximate this. And when the plays don't work, as long as you have the plan, the deviations will become relatively obvious as you play. Our goal here is to make you better at Snap. And I guess this is a decent place to do this talk again because we're doing a long video today anyway. Um, we don't do gameplay here. My general belief is gameplay is a trick. Um, and this is not meant to insult my fellow creators. I don't think like most people think the way I do. I'm a teacher. And long-time viewers have heard me say this. Um, a model where you just watch me do something and then you do it doesn't really work. There's a thing in teaching called um, I do, we do, you do. And like without the we do, I do, you do doesn't really work. Like 
um, you're better off with like written instructions that you can try and internalize. And then as you try and think through those instructions and enact them, you get better. Just watching me do something without the full, like extremely in-depth explanation will not make you better at Marvel Snap. And there is no real we do if we're not streaming together and I'm not explaining every move. So without that we do, I think that this is a better model for helping people get better at Snap, for helping people get those goals in Snap that I talked about at the beginning. You don't like that? I'm really sorry. Gameplay can be very entertaining and I'm not, not here to entertain you. I'm here to chat with you, talk with you, help you out with Snap, right? But like, Gameplay is a lot of work for what to me is not what I want the goal of this channel to be. So hopefully you can respect that. Hopefully you like that. Let me know what you think as you watch. And sorry, in the comments. Thanks. Also, if you're going to comment and you didn't mind that, now's a good time to sub. All right. Let's go and stop for Loki Bounce. This is what I played to 90. I played this from 85 to 90 in, I don't know, about 30 minutes earlier today, maybe 40. Um, I played my version of the bounce to eight from 73, whatever the hell you start with, to 85. And then today, I just I haven't had a lot of time to play. I'm testing what I can. Um, the school here is in freaking tense. I have to write like 60 to eight, um, 70 college recommendations a year. And it's just an ordeal. Um, plus grading a bunch of college level work. Like I'm, it all uh, four of my five classes are college level classes. So everyone who writes anything is like multiple pages. It's an ordeal, especially at the start of the year. So please excuse uh, a little bit of my lack of grinding to infinite yet. I'm 93. I'll get there. Um, I played this from 85 to 93, I guess, technically to 90. But, you know, you get the three bonus and I love it. It's so freaking much fun. Um, This is another one. Like, I don't know if Mobius is super duper needed because like, Wave is gone. Wave is like everyone. Enough people are running Mobius that Wave is rare. Um, occasionally Mobius is really good, but like any deck that's running Wave, I could just Loki and take their damn Mobius, and that like call it a day. This deck is very cool. It's got a lot of ways to draw. Um, Falcon is like might be better than Beast right now because of Mobius, because it's getting you back the ones, which then make more cards. Um, all of these things pump the crap out of Collector and Angela. And as they're pumping Collector and Angela, they're also pumping Bishop. Um, if you're filling lanes, they get big with Elsa. And then if they're, you're not, you don't see Elsa and they're not getting big enough, you've got a big Elsa. You, Angela, you got a big Collector around turn 5, turn 4, turn 5. You drop a Loki and you say, okay, let's try your cards for a bit. And then you win. It's so good. There's no question in my mind that Swin is one of the top players in the world. Must have Kitty, Elsa, and Loki. Do you need Mobius? I don't know. Here is my list of changes. Luke, Jeff, Coulson, Nightcrawler, or Mirage. The card I'm most interested in trying, I think, is, um, for the time being, is Mirage. That plus two power is really good. If you can figure out when they're going to leave their kitty in hand for a turn, it's glorious. Uh, I also really like Jeff here, because there's no way to get into, like, difficult to reach lanes. Except that, you know, if your opponent has any of those, you can sort of just Loki it. Your hand is real, real full for Loki here a lot of the time. All right, Collector is somehow even better than usual here. So Kitty is greater than Agent 13 equal Maria. You play Maria if you don't have a two you want to play. You usually do, but if you don't, great. That's what Maria Hill is for. Um, and that's greater than Snowguard. You'd really like to save Snowguard for when Collector is out or right before you Loki. Um, you're not playing the bird unless there's a really specific reason. You'll note that there is no Quinjet here. Again, too much Mobius. We're starting to adjust the meta, which is going to like become a rock, paper, scissor thing relatively soon. Mentally prepare yourself. All right. Turn three. Uh, one plus a two. There's The twos are more important than the threes here. Sorry, this way. Uh, the twos are more important than the threes here as a general rule. As good as Bishop is, uh, Collector is more important. Elsa is more important. Bishop's probably more important than Angela, unless you have Kitty. Um, I mean, Falcon's more important. Mobius is very often more important. Um, and you're never going to Loki on three fundamentally ever unless your hand is utter garbage. Like if you if your hand were like I don't know you went Agent Thirteen into Maria Hill into oh, Maria Hill and Stoneguard at that point you Loki on three and you just go all right let's go right but other than that you're very very rarely Loki on three. Um, ooh, wrong way. Tell you I usually know which way to click the buttons, but what are you gonna do? Turn four Loki in a one Snowguard is the one you're looking for. If not, you're falconing back someone's. 
Uh, don't be afraid to falcon back some ones and pass the turn as long as you're not filling your hand because you really want that turn five draw. Because turn five, like the very best thing you can do, um, is very often collector and Loki. And then you've just got like a nine power collector and a five power Loki. You had a, you had a red skull worth of power that turn, and now you got their cheap hand. Um, when you do that, very often, strangely, your best play at the end of the game is America. Like the board is pretty full because you didn't play that. So you dropped a bunch of stuff on five. Um, and now like the board is nearly full except for one or two spots. And then you just drop America in one of those spots and like, well, America is not great. America as a 12 is pretty damn good. And she's very often a 12 because else is busted. All good. Um, yeah, this deck is good. All right. We've got our Sven, top four Loki bounce, variant talk. We've got mostly similar variants from before. We got an extra hip here. That is the collector hip, which we love. Uh, this is the best Agent 13 um, hip or this. It's really, really great. I think this is the best Maria Hill. The only thing I like even close to as much as hips is the Noir variants. Noir is gorgeous. I love this cartoony snow guard. I also have the spotlight one. I don't use her. Um, I have this bishop and the... Um, whatchamacallit, the steampunk bishop, like I have the steampunk falcon. I should probably keep those two cards consistent in decks. We'll see. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. This is still the best Loki. I like the Rainbow Bridge one. I don't really like the Venom one, but I think this is still the best Loki. It feels the Lokiest of the Lokis. And that's the deck. That's the variants. Let's talk some new cards. Y'all ready? Okay. December. Um, First and foremost... We don't know what the spotlights are the first week of December. Unless something is confusing here, right? We don't know what our first week of December spotlights are. Because they're not going to have blob in spotlights and then in the cash, right? Um, maybe they will, though. And maybe we just don't know what the new card is for um, December 5th to 12th. Whatever. We'll figure that out as we go forward. More information will make it clear. Um, Sebastian Shaw. The Black King of the Hellfire Club is our card. When this card permanently when this card permanently gains power, it gains plus two power. That's nuts. Literally, just a surfer deck makes him a three seven. Six stats. You add a um what's her dumb name? Nikia or an Okoye. And you're just like, alright, cool. I've got a bajillion power. I've got like a 315. Um there's probably a million other ways. Oh, yeah. Also, freaking Bloodstone. Um, seems like adding five power immediately with Elsa is probably going to be halfway decent. Um, a Forge does the same thing. Like, as long as the power is permanent, she's great. Uh, you can add power in deck and then Shuri him for, like, crazy power. Um, I don't know what to tell you. This is going to be an A-plus card. This feels like it's too strong, but... They just printed Elsa and Loki. So, like, apparently, maybe season pass cards being busted is going to be the new thing. Um, I think probably plus one more power is enough. But I also think probably plus two power for Elsa is enough. So, what do I know? Um, this card is meta-defining. It's meta-shifting. All right, we got Blob. Uh, we're apparently doing good six-cost cards now. That's the thing we're going to push, which is nice. Because Blob is... Uh, on reveal, merge your deck into this and gain its total power. Ongoing can't be moved. I like that ongoing. It's adorable. Because um, on turn six, we're very worried about Blob being moved. Um, and I wish it had can't be destroyed, right? But uh, this is probably pretty damn good in a lot of decks. You're going to play a big power deck, right? And at the end of the game, you're just going to say, cool. Blob. And then have like a 320, whatever nonsense. Um... Yeah, enjoy. Uh, it's going to be a build around. I think it's going to be good. Do I think it's going to be meta defining? Nope. But it's going to be a good card. What may be meta defining is Firestar, because Firestar with Elsa is going to be nuts. Um, Firestar with that kind of Sebastian Shaw deck where you can add power to Firestar is going to be nuts, where you're adding three power to what amounts to like half your board if you can drop it then. Um, there's that deck that Lauren Whatever is playing that we're going to cover soon. Uh, I mean, I guess we covered an earlier version. We'll cover the new Elsa version soon that has um an end game of um Wasp plus Yellow Jacket plus Mjolnir. If it draws those early, it just plays them early if Firestar's there, and then those all get plus three, and that seems like it's kind of amazing too. 
Um, Havoc is terrible. They, I hope they redo that. But uh, after each turn, you lose one max energy. And uh, this gains plus three power. You can't lose energy in Marvel Snap. It's not a thing. That is way too much of a downside. I get what he's doing. He's absorbing the energy and turning it into power like Havoc does. But, like, it's so hard for me to imagine this being any good. Um, if you play it on two, right? Like, he's going to be a... Uh, on three, he'll be a two-four. On four, he'll be a two seven. On five, he'll be a two ten. And on six, he'll be a two thirteen. That sounds great, right? Except on turn three, you have two energy, right? Um, Jesus. You just. Don't. Okay. After each turn, you lose one max energy. Does that mean you basically stay with two energy the whole game? Because on turn three, you'll have two energy. Then on turn four, you lose another max energy. You'll have. Because if, like, if you're just one energy behind, it's much less terrible, right? Like, if on turn three you have two energy, but on turn four you have three energy, turn five you have four energy, like, that's probably doable. I still don't think it's worth it, but, like, it's reasonably doable at that point. Um, I'm not a fan here at the end of the day. And Celine is going to be good because Anna Hellas comes out the month before. Maybe, you know, tomorrow's video we'll talk about the, seri the Spotlight Caches coming in November. Seems good. A little out of order, but whatever. These are the new data mines, so we're covering them first. Um, afflict the lowest car power card in each player's hand with negative three power. So you can make your Green Goblin completely insane as you uh, play that on three with Black Widow. It's going to be very, very powerful. I think Celine's a great card. Um, the rest of the Spotlight Caches. Um, Stegron finally joins Spotlight Caches, which is horrifying because... That means it's very unlikely that we're getting series drops December. So, shit. That's nonsense. That's so frustrating. Um, Jeff is back, which is good, even if I think this Jeff was kind of ugly. No offense to the artist. That blob is freaking amazing. That's one of the best spotlight caches, uh, spotlight variants ever. So, like, big props for that. Um, Firestar. I don't know what that Ravona is. That looks like a Wolverine Ravona thing. I have no thoughts. The man, uh, man thing is back. We've got two series four star cards with Firestarter, Firestar, which makes me assume that Firestar is probably going to be pretty damn good. They're also putting Man Thing back because like the that'll be the junk month. Like junk is starting to come up here, and having Ravona and Man Thing um, with junk seems like it's probably pretty solid, right? Like we're, we want to get those back into spotlights. Havoc. Uh, comes with Legion in case you're missing Legion and Nico. I still don't think Nico is going to be great, but whatever. Um, Legion is amazing, but you should probably use tokens. I think this is just a skip week for everyone but whales. Spoiler, I whale, I content create. Um, and Lady Deathstrike is weirdly back again really quickly for the third time. Still no second Iron Lad, right? But we got third Lady Deathstrike. Ah. Uh. Whatever. Um, if Black Knight is great, this is your second chance at him, and this is three series five cards. I'm more and more thinking Death Strike might end up being a meta card with all the junk stuff coming with cards like um Mobius and Elsa in the meta. Like Lady Death Strike seems pretty decent. She seems pretty decent. I'm gonna have to try and cook something up with that. Um, I am frustrated that all these are series five cards. I hate when they do all series five months. Last time they did. Two cards the following month were Series 4, so hopefully they keep that pattern if that's how they're going to do it. All I can really say about that, I think this month looks powerful. I don't think it looks meta-breaking. I think Shaw is the best card. I think Firestar is likely second best. Um, Selene and Blob are both good. And I need to hear more about how Havoc works, but I don't like Havoc at all. Thanks again to Drewberry for this. We are about to be out for the day. I gotta go to bed. It is late and it is a work night. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, hit that sub button. We appreciate the support. We appreciate you. We'll be back tomorrow with three more decks. Peace.